Now, I, I suppose some of you might say it's easy for us to talk about the harm done by the welfare state. We're two privileged white guys. But what about poor people? And what about minorities? Well, let's talk to someone who's not white and grew up far from privilege. Deneen Borelli is the author of Blacklash, a book that claims the left is driving Americans to the government plantation. So, government plantation? What do you mean? Well, John, listen, the government economic, economic government plantation, because there are way too many people who feel they are entitled to government support for their everyday wants and needs. When you're looking at the number of people who are obtaining government assistance, you're also trading that for votes in some instances, especially when... And the number keeps going up, regardless number, of what happens with the economy. The numbers are deplorable. Over 47 million people are on food stamps. Let me put that in perspective. The state of California... There are more people on food stamps than citizens in the state of California. But some people are genuinely unable to find work. Some people the don't. The jobs are out there. Uh, I mean, it might not be the job that you want. I mean, as I laid out in my book, Blacklash, I've worked in a number of jobs I wasn't always crazy about. Think about the New Jersey Department of Motor Vehicles, working there without a computer, with manual typewriters, uh, long lines, and people coming in angry because it's the end of the month. It was a great experience, but it wasn't the ideal situation, but I did it. And the, the jobs are out there. Last year, I went to a job center and welfare office, not far from here and ask people, why are you getting handouts? No jobs around? No. Really? I asked my team to check that out. Within a few blocks of that welfare office, they found lots of businesses that want to hire people. Of 79 businesses that we asked in less than two hours, 40 said they would hire. 24 said they'd take people with no experience. The owner of this restaurant said he'd hire lots of people. How many could come with no experience? I would probably take like nine, probably take nine and train them. And at the welfare office, people told us there are no jobs. There's, no, there's plenty of jobs. Outside that welfare office, we met this woman who said she works for human resources. There are no jobs around? I don't think so. There wouldn't be this line out here if it was. Is it possible they're not really trying? Some of them, a lot of them are not, but you can tell the ones that are trying. And do you think you and Human Resources encourage people to be dependent? Yes, we do. So what, what should be done about that? Uh, I don't really know. I don't really know. <laughs> stop, I guess stop giving away the money and then they'll get a job. <laughs> and you work for the government. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It's refreshing when someone in the government says that. Yeah, you know, the jobs are out there. You need to take responsibility, not rely on the government. The government has extended unemployment benefits, and then after that, people go on disability somehow. I still don't understand how they're able to do that. But we're broke. Let's go on to the touchy racial part. I mean, you use this phrase, government plantation. Plantation implies slavery. That's certainly very different. Well, I call it economic slavery. And when you look at the people who are, are relying on government for their everyday wants and needs, those resources are limited. And with those resources come restrictions. If you are gainfully employed, you can do whatever you want with your resources. And the sky is the limit. So you can make as much money as you want. When I left home, I didn't know what job I was going to take, but I always took a job where I knew I could uh, learn something, gain from it, and advance from there. You say growing up you heard messages from so-called civil rights leaders that said don't do that? Yes, and we still hear the same messages, and I call them the black liberal establishment, community activists, some pastors. What's the message? NAACP. The message is that blacks are victims, blacks need special treatment, and it's the same message i white heard racist then society, you today. can't make it. And to blame others. Uh, Charles Murray said in the book Losing Ground that helped turn things around. We tried to provide more for the poor and produced more poor instead. We inadvertently built a trap. That's what you both are arguing. Absolutely. Look, look what we did. We said to people, have babies. We're going to pay you to have children. We said we're going to give you you know, aid for this. We're going to give you welfare for uh, not working. We're going to give you housing that you don't have to pay for. If you have no skin in the game, if you go to an apartment and you don't have to fill out a lease and give the guy a deposit and then pay your rent every month, what's the difference? You have no skin in the game. She says, uh, uh, plantations, I say we've created vertical Indian reservations in our city where we're just warehousing human beings. But you talk about children. 
the people on the left would say, you cut this out, you're punishing these children, they're innocent. Of course they're innocent, but at some point you've got to break the cycle of poverty. You're not going to break the cycle of poverty if you keep making more poor people. Because we're now four or five generations yeah. into people who have no nothing else than government support. You know, I watch Judge Judy all the time, and she always asks these people about their case, and they don't know anything about the case they're being sued for. But then she says, how do you make a living? And you know what they say? Oh, I get WIC, I get AFDC. They know government programs like the back of their hand, but that's all they know. Now, Deneen, uh, on Amazon, we looked at your Amazon page for Blacklash. Yes. Some nasty comments about you. Jay Pettit says you're despicable. It's so easy and profitable to pander to the Republicans. Give them one more black face to try to show, see, we're not racist. Tricky Nikki says, there are two types of conservatives, the very rich and fools. Ms. Borelli falls into the latter category. I'm an American. And I don't really care what the comments are that people write about. The reason they write those comments is to try to stifle me, to shut me down, because my message is resonating. And again, I'm about liberty. Really? I it's resonating? Wait, 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 what do you mean it's resonating? I see the welfare state growing. Yeah. Well, I see people who are coming out of the closet. I call them black conservatives, uh, closet black conservatives, who are coming out saying they appreciate what I do, what I say, but they're afraid to be targeted and criticized by their family their friends and their co-workers when in fact they agree with what I say. And when you say we're making progress and I'm skeptical, I'm thinking about things like SNAP, which is the new name for welfare basically. Uh, I guess they have Catch less, name. Less, less of a stigma. Yeah. It should say for stupid name for atrocious program. <laughs> but uh, in Rhode Island they host bingo themed parties and games for elderly people to encourage them yeah. to get food stamps. SNAP is the new food stamp program. I find it to be utterly embarrassing. Our, our government is running ads or was running ads and having these parties to get more people to rely on the government. Remember Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform America. Getting people to be more dependent on the government is part of that plan and it's the wrong plan for our country. Just one last example about this. You see people begging in cities like this, and when I was a kid, I would feel sorry for them and give them money. Then we did tests and found that almost all of them were head homes and were scamming people. And the social service agencies say, don't give to these people. I tried it for an hour and made 11 bucks. That's more than minimum wage. Um, by giving money to those people, you are teaching them to be dependent or supporting their alcohol habit. You're saying, yeah, you don't need to work. We're teaching people to eat fish. We're not teaching people how to fish. It's an old cliche, but it's true. The more you make people dependent on the government, they're not going to go out and try and find it themselves. We have to judge government programs, as Milton Friedman said, not by their intention, but by their effectiveness. And the problem is we've got too many government programs that are ineffective. And it seems you can't get rid of any of them. Thank you, Patrick Dorenson, Deneen Borelli.